They are still trying to clear the ring. Chuck Hall is in the center of it, and we are ready for the official introduction. And tension is high here in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for this main event of the evening. The judges are Obi Obison, Guy Justris, and Yoshika Yoshida. The timekeeper is Eddie O'Toole. Counting at the knockdowns, Charlie Roth. The attending physicians at ringside, Doctors Donald Romeo and Flip Homansky. And the referee is Stanley Christodoulou. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. 15 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger, the current WBA junior middleweight champion of the world, fighting out of Panama City, Panama, weighing in at 156 and one half pounds, with a professional record of 76 wins, four defeats with 57 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, a three-time world champion in quest of his fourth crown, introducing the man with the hands of stone, Roberto Duran. Fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 157 and one half pounds. He has a professional record of 57 wins, two defeats and two draws with 48 knockouts. He is the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Introducing marvelous Marvin Hagler. We are just a few moments away from the opening bell. Both fighters, of course, looking fierce. They're poised and they're ready. The referee, Stanley Christodoulou, a bit of a controversy with him back when uh, Aaron Pryor knocked out Alexis Arguello in November of last year. Some felt that Christodoulou let the fight go a little too long, and that's why they anticipate tonight that he will sort of let these two really go at each other. And indeed, he wasn't even scheduled to be the referee tonight. Guy Jutras, one of the judges from Canada, originally scheduled to referee, and after quite a few goings on here in Las Vegas, eventually that man, Chris Dula, was named the referee. Remains to be seen whether Jutras uh, has any hard feelings over that. It was the Petronellis, you're looking at one of them right there along with Hagler, who urged them not to have Jutras as the referee. You see Hagler with seven successful defenses of his title. He's going after the record of Carlos Monzon, who had 14. That's uh, uh, quite an accomplishment. My, uh, Monzon is the idol of Marvin Hagler. It gives him his due. Monzon, in attendance here, by the way, has picked Duran to win. Uh, they'll be uh, fighting uh, here under the auspices of the Nevada Athletic Commission. They'll use the 10-point must system. Hagler with the best career winning percentage of the uh, middleweights with 95% right behind him, Carlos Monzon. They'll use the 10-point must system. The referee will not be involved in the judgment. The three knockdown rule is in effect. And there are a few who believe this fight will go the distance. Of course, there is a, a big question mark here as these men, of the, Hagler and Duran, have never met before. Uh, Dur Duran moving up from the lighter weights fighting for the first time as a middleweight. We just don't know if uh, there is a question here of strength. Could it be that uh, Hagler is too big for Duran? However, could it be that Duran really has the power to wage an even battle with a man who seems to be invincible? 
there's a split opinion on whether that man Duran must be inside or outside against Tagler. The conventional thinking used to be that he had to get inside, work the body, and work the head. But no less than two champions, Alexis Arguello and Sugar Ray Leonard, told us that they don't believe Duran is strong enough on the inside. If he's to win this fight, he must do it from the outside and show his excellent defensive skills against Tagler. We have a delay here as uh, Stanley Christodoulo, the referee, uh, looks on in the corner of Duran. They're still gloving Duran. Let it be perfectly clear, though, despite the fact that um, marvelous Marvin Hagler has won 32 in a row with seven successful title defenses. Tonight he's facing a man whose extraordinary skills have carried him to the prospect of winning a fourth title. So this is a great moment for Marvin Hagler as well. And Stanley Christodoulo now brings the two champions to the center of the ring. Let's go. And so we're ready to go. Live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. At stake, the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. The principles are familiar. Marvin Hagler in the burgundy trunks, the southpaw against Roberto Duran in the dark blue. These first moments, so important. Both fighters wanting to test the strength of the other. Hagler, of course, familiar to most people, that left-handed style. Remember, he will switch to righty at various times throughout this fight if he thinks it will be effective against Duran. There's the jab from Hagler, and that's a punch that he will need tonight if he's to win against Duran. Duran working the body of Hagler, and he gets a warning from the referee to uh, watch it or a low. Hagler told me that if he finds out early that he seems to be stronger than Duran, he'll go right at him, take him out of there immediately. And indeed, Duran trying to go to the body early. That is a tactic many people believed he would do. Duran has lost four times. In all four defeats, his opponents have stayed outside his range of power. Here in the early moments, Hagler has done that. You don't expect that for the rest of the evening. Obviously, both fighters, it's a chess match now. They want to feel each other out and see just what the other has to offer. And for Hagler, so far, he's found out one thing. He can land his jab a little bit against Duran, and that will be important to him if he can continue to do it. We're halfway through the opening round. A bit of a right hand by Duran on the chin of Hagler was a glancing blow. Hagler has never been down as an amateur or professional. The last time Duran was down was nine years ago. He was down twice in his career as a pro, both left hooks by Esteban de Jesus, oddly in the first rounds of those bouts, with Duran coming back and winning. For those people who claim that Hagler would be awed by this event, this is the time when it would affect him. He would be tight in the first round and perhaps be hurt as Duran hurt Leonard early in their fight. That right hand of Duran was picked off by Hagler. But not that one. Duran gets in a right hand. Duran's best punch is the right hand. Tries to throw the, the lead right. Watching Hagler on his workouts, he and uh, Pat Petronelli worked on slipping that right hand and countering with both the left and the right. Hagler won't show his uppercut early in the fight. He wants to get Duran with that later on when they're at close quarters. Less than 30 seconds to go in a getting to know you opening round. You saw Duran slip the jab in the right in the left hand by Hagler. That's what he intends to do, he hopes, all night. Hagler had his left blocked by Duran as he moved backward. Duran, an underrated defensive fighter. He was awesome in that regard against Davey Moore, continually slipping Moore's right hand. A quiet opening round. Let's go to the corner of Marvin Hagler. The Petronellis are there. Pat and Good. What is doing? Hello, boy. All right. Get some money. You got it. You got it. Right in there. All right. That's the feeling all right. See what he's doing. All right. The jab and he's getting on the uh, left yeah, hand. Trying trying to, to so soon as the jab on. hits, he's trying to throw that straight right hand. Okay? So when you throw that jab, when he bends over, come up with that uppercut. Up like you've been doing. You lean over that side every time. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, box like you've been boxing. Mm -hmm. Catch him coming in and stay with his feet. Look at that. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Okay. 
You heard uh, Goody Petronelli in the Haggis corner telling him that obviously Durant's trying to load up with the right. That's not a scoop. Everybody knows it. Round two, <laughs> scheduled for 15. And Hagler said something very interesting. He said, yeah, I know. He's trying to get that thumb in there. Of course, Durant uh, gave a thumb to Davey Moore early in their fight, whether intentional or not. It blinded Moore's vision and helped him win that fight, and the Hagler camp very concerned about that tonight. A slow boil here. We haven't had any eruptions as yet. Durant with a short left hand. Hagley with a left hand of his own to the side of Durant's face. Hagler there showing the stiff jab and then the left cross to the head of Durant. I think the key question right now in everyone's mind is, can Durant hurt Hagler? We haven't seen any evidence yet. He hasn't hit him with anything, and that's what Hagler's really waiting for. He wants to see. The second warning from the referee, Stanley Christosulo to Durant about a low blow. And we're in the second round. Early on, Durant is getting under the jab and the straight left of Hagler. And so it'll be incumbent upon Hagler as he blocks that right to use the uppercut effectively on the inside as he's doing right there. Hagler working with the free left hand there as Durant was uh, holding on. Durant with a short right. So far in this fight, it's Hagler who's working harder on the inside. Many people thought it would be Durant who would be ripping shots to the body and the head. Just past the halfway mark of round two. Hagler with a left hand to the head of Duran. That straightened him up. That right hand of Duran was blocked by Hagler. And we're starting to get the first indications of strength here. Is it looks like Hagler's having no problem moving Duran. Hagler comes from downstairs with an uppercut. Less than a minute to go. Hagler with the left hand on the head of Duran, and Duran gives him a sneer. The familiar sneer of Duran is back. And now we're starting to percolate as uh, the champion, Hagler, is starting to unwind. Duran with the right hand on the head of Hagler. Duran just waiting to drop the right hand in. He feels that's his ticket to win this fight. So far, most have been blocked by Hagler, but one or two have gotten in. That one was blocked. The crowd erupts every time Durant throws something, and in the last few seconds, he had a right hand blocked that he missed with a right, but yet there were cheers from the crowd. Hagler seems intent on getting off first. That right hand by Durant was short on the chest of Hagler. When Durant is, when Hagler is fighting as a lefty, his punches are a little wider. Some people think that may be a problem for him, and Durant may be able to get inside the wide left hand. Here's the corner. Roberto Durant will try and get a translation. Sí, mismo, compa. No te precipites, oíste. Antes apurate el pie. No lo apure, el pie de atrás tiene que mantenerte ahí para cuando él ataca, que él le gusta atacar. Sí, Tú tienes con que re ahí mismo, ¿eh? Okay. Ahí viene, viene la boda. Ahí viene la boda. Ahí viene. Ahí viene. Too late to pick up any conversation, but Al, it seems that Hagler is being uh, very effective with his jab. But Durant has not been able to solve that. Well, as we head into round three, he's landing the jab, but I don't think quite as often as he wants to, Sal. But will Durant be able to avoid it as we go on in this fight? That right hand by Durant picked off by Hagler again. And through two rounds, Hagler staying outside of Durant's power. Step back. We thought we might see a little more lateral movement from Hagler to confuse Duran. That was something more and Cuevas did not do in their fights, but he really has been going right at Duran. Duran short again. to the stomach by Duran as Hagler missed and was out of position. 
So the legend still has the cute moves. Those went to take advantage. And as we said at the top, if there's a way that Duran would win this fight, I think it would be that way. He just slipped the straight left by Hagler. It's his defensive skills that I think will make this fight for him. Now on the inside, Hagler doing most of the punching. Duran insists that he's in tip-top shape. He trained for most of the summer. Hagler did the same. Hagler just brought a right uppercut onto the pace of Duran. We're halfway through round number three. And this fight has certainly turned into a chess match. If people thought it would be a brawl, so far it is not that. And maybe it was never meant to be because we have two master boxers in there. Hagler showing tremendous respect for Duran. Staying outside of his power, he just switched to the orthodox style and uh, banged Duran with a lead right hand. Hagler stays in the orthodox stance and switches left. Less than a minute to go in round three. Duran with a left to the head. Hagler with a right to the head of Duran. Duran with a short right hand in the face of Hagler. Another right hand by Duran to the head of Hagler. Big left hand that rocked Duran. Duran with a right uppercut. And now Duran has gotten Hagler into a major exchange here in round three. And this is where Roberto wants him uh, at close range, especially on the ropes. You'll notice that Hagler just spun away from the ropes. He doesn't want to be there. And now Duran coming forward. Apparently he feels after that exchange that he can fight inside with Hagler. And they, certainly they were both throwing flurries in that round. Duran moments ago ducked underneath an express train of a left hand by Hagler. Hagler caught nothing but air. Some action from round number three. And on the inside, people wondered, would Hagler just hold on as he did against Antifermo, or would he throw punches? This indicates he is throwing punches, but certainly Roberto scored well on the inside. Goody Petronelli told uh, Marvin in the corner just moments ago, don't try and knock him out. It's not the name of the game. He sensed that Duran had lured Hagler into close-range exchanges in that third round. What? Marvin on the outside, boxing Duran, making Duran work, making Duran lunch. Round four. Duran has closed the distance to Hagler. They're closer than ever before. And they are both smiling at each other at alternate times during these rounds. There's the jab in the left hand by Hagler. That's what he wants to get in, but Duran has done a fairly good job of slipping that jab. Now here's the dancing and the lateral movement by Hagler. Perhaps we'll see more of it as the fight progresses. There's no question that Hagler respects the strength of Duran at this point. And Duran with his third warning about a low blow. Of course, many feel is the advantage of uh, Hagler to make Duran work and make this fight go a long distance. And now Hagler's starting to throw some feints at Duran and trying to show him a little movement. And so far, Duran, while Hagler hasn't landed much, Duran's going for all those feints. Right hand by Duran. Hagler with a left to the body. That backed up Duran for an instant. A big swat of a left hand by Hagler, the kind of uh, jab that decked Caveman Lee in the first round. And indeed, now Hagler is starting to get his jab on track, and I guess that's the most important weapon for him in this fight. If he can land it, uh, he'll be very effective. We're halfway through the fourth Duran with the right hand, and Hagler didn't even move. Right on the 
Uh, but that caught the uh, Hagler on the chin. Less than a minute to go in round four. Duran has shown us one thing. The right hand can get home to Hagler. Hasn't done that much in this fight, but he has landed it several times. That's good news for him and his fans. A right to the body by Duran, but he paid the price. Hagler countered with a left hook to the head. Hagler starting to throw some combinations. That's been absent so far from both fighters in the first three and a half rounds. Less than 30 seconds to go in the rounds. No question, Hagler reverted back to the boxing style here in round four after getting into a couple of toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges with Duran in round three. And I think by and large he was more effective because of it. And here comes the chant of Duran's name. To uh, both corners, you see the uh, distances, the number of rounds these two men have been involved in. Uh, Marvin Hagler and his seven defenses uh, went as far as the 11th, uh, but uh, he made short work of his other opponents. He was taken to the 11th round by Mustafa Hamsho, uh, but he won every round. That was a devastating display by Hagler in that fight. As the fight goes on, people will wonder which fighter will have the stamina. But uh, I think both certainly can go the distance. At the very least here, Al, uh, through four rounds, I think Roberto Duran now knows that he's not facing an indomitable force here, that he's still very much in this fight. He's not going to be steamrolled by Marvin Hagler. No, that's clearly the case. And uh, what he also knows is that occasionally he can get that right hand in. And if he can hurt Hagler with it, uh, could do himself some good in this fight. Round five, scheduled for 15. Hagler with a bit of a left hand. Duran with a right hand in response. Not too much impact there. I mentioned at the outset that Hagler likes to switch to the righty style. So far, he has not done that in this fight, apparently feeling that he can be more effective as a southpaw against Duran. And there he does it. As soon as I said he hasn't done it, he switches to the righty stance. Left hook to the head from the righty stance by Marvin Hagler. Well, in the brief time he's changed righty, he's fought well against Hagler, uh, Duran. In the workouts every day, Hagler uh, fought several rounds right-handed to be uh, sharp, to be able to show Duran that he can go both ways. And Hagler with a right hook from the lefty stance rattled Roberto Duran. And he landed a good uppercut just before that. So he's starting to get the hand speed on Limbert. And Hagler looks a little looser here in round five. And after round three, you'll note uh, Goody Petronelli said you look tight out there. Switched again to the orthodox style, tried a left hook, but he missed. We're halfway through round five. That right hand by Duran was blocked by Hagler. We point that out because you should not be misled by the cheers of the crowd. Good Hagler with a right hand, Duran with a right hand. Hagler comes back with a straight left to the head. Duran with a whack of a right hand on the side of uh, Hagler's head. Less than a minute to go of the round, Duran, uh, Duran gets away with a low blow out of the view of the referee. Neither fighter has done much body work in the last several rounds. That's something they're both noted for. <laughs> and neither fighter working that effectively on the inside. They trade body shots. Less than 30 seconds to go in the round. Double jab there by Hagler. He's tied up by Duran. And he drifts toward the ropes. Chris Dula letting them battle their way out of that clinch. Duran is finding Hagler a relatively elusive target also. Not like Davey Moore or Pepino Cuevas when he fashioned those two big comeback wins. Hagler a much better defensive fighter than those two men. Right hand by Duran. And that was right on the chin of Hagler. 
but he's not hurt. And there's the bell blocking the end of the fifth round as Duran puts an exclamation point on the round with a straight right hand. Trying to get my left hand. Yep. Yeah. Oh God. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Oh, just seems still a little tight in there now. Yeah. yeah. He's down. waiting for. He's yeah. waiting to throw that right hand at you. He's counting for you. He's waiting to come in. Oh, the speed. Yeah. I'm trying to get it out, man. Okay. Some action from the previous round, the fifth. That was early in the round. They're applying that metal piece called Enswell on the left cheekbone of uh, Hagler. Apparently. Uh, there's some apprehension there about some swelling. That's always a telltale sign. But uh, we are right in the underneath Hagler, and it doesn't seem to be a pronounced uh, problem. You'll get him, But at any rate, they're putting on that metal piece. Just go ahead and do it. Patience, man. They used that on Sugar Ray Leonard when he fought Thomas Hearns and and uh, kept him in the fight until uh, Ray took out Hearns in the 14th round. In the last round, this is Hagler. round six. In the last round, Hagler switched to righty, and I thought Sal was very effective, but he's not gone back to that style yet. When he switched to righty, he landed a very good straight right hand. This is a tactical fight, and uh, the experts were divided on who they thought would win if it became this kind of fight. Many people felt Durant could not fight him from the outside, but Roberto's not doing that badly from the outside against Hagler. A left hand by uh, Hagler. Duran shakes his head, no, I'm not hurt. Uh, the couple of jabs there by Hagler had put Duran off balance and wide open for the shot. Duran with a right hand after he was hit by a right by Hagler. So we're getting some toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff here. I think when Hagler switches to righty, he is much more effective against Duran, and there he does it now. He can land often in the righty stance. There's the good jab by Hagler. A good right by Hagler. This is the way he needs to be in this fight. A hard jab by Hagler from the orthodox stance. Hagler with a left hook to the head. Hagler switches to lefty, goes to righty. And they're in the center of the ring now. Duran not been able to make full connections as much as Hagler. And I think we're seeing the key to this fight. If Marvin Hagler could sustain his attack as a righty, I think he'd be very effective. Good uppercut by Hagler. We're halfway through the sixth round. Duran with a right and left. Hagler here applying some pressure. He's got into another gear. And it's Hagler on the inside, not Duran, who's dominating the action, as many people thought. Hagler now digging in now, throwing shots, and he is catching Duran. Durant's still coming forward. Big right hand by Hagler from the righty stand. That was his best punch. Less than a minute to go now, and Duran is starting to feel, feel some of that power from Hagler. And again, Marvin goes back to lefty. I don't know why he's so effective as a right-hander against Duran. There's no question in this round, Hagler made up his mind to start to drill Duran, and uh, he has approached Duran from a different philosophy, and that is, he has turned into slugger here. He was boxing Duran earlier in the fight. Duran is flat-footed, breathing hard, less than 30 seconds to go in the sixth, and Hagler is digging in and throwing shots from his heels. And the strength of Hagler taking over here now, the first real middleweight that Duran has faced, and he's finding out how powerful Hagler is. Hagler with the left hand, another left hand. In between, Duran missed with an uppercut. A strong sixth round for Marvin Hagler. Punching by uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler, Roberto Duran uh, is uh, got a clear-eyed look and he's unmarked. But he took some shots in that six. And as we look in here, we will see Hagler dig in from the right-handed stance. As I mentioned, he went to that in this round and it was very effective. Al uh, Hagler there uh, connecting with the right. Durant trying to slip it as he did against Davey Moore, but he couldn't get out of the way. And uh, that may, if coming events cast their shadows, that may be it. Duran not being able to slip that right hand. We'll see. 
You can see Hagler anxious for this next round. Hagler comes out righty. Sal, I wonder if he deliberately fought the first few rounds lefty to lull Duran into a false sense of security, knowing that he could win with the right-handed stance. Although he's switched now again back to the southpaw stance. Uh, Hagler giving Roberto a different look. He switches again. Duran's left jab landing even better at the righty than his right jab was landing when he was southpaw. Right hand lead by Hagler from the orthodox stance. No question, Hagler not only has gone into a different gear, he has stepped up the pace. And he just poked uh, his glove at Duran as if to say, you're trying to thumb me. Duran giving him his now famous sneer. And Duran that time slipped the right hand. A strange show of bravado by Duran after his worst round in the fight in round six. Maybe he knows something. to the head both fighters smiling at each other lots of gamesmanship here as the crowd is chanting Duran's name we're halfway through the seventh one of the misnomers about this fight was that Duran would not fight inside that he would simply hold he has been the one who's been dominant when they are inside good read right by Hagler and you can hear that across the ring Hagler pushing Duran to a fast pace here he wants Duran to work hard Hagler out punching Duran here in the seventh as he did in the sixth, and Duran seems undismayed. He mocks Hagler, smiles at him. Hagler's expression is unchanged since he entered the ring. It's a menacing look. Again, Vito and the Fermo in their first fight. Hagler dominated all the early rounds as he may be doing here against Duran. Ran out of gas, got frustrated when at the Fermo wouldn't go down. Will that happen in this fight if Duran can take it the full 15? Less than 30 seconds to go in the seventh. And there, look on the inside. It's Hagler really throwing the shots, not Duran. It is Hagler who's got Duran against the ropes. Duran wanted this, but he wanted the other way. He wanted to press the attack against Hagler. Has not been able to do that. They're at close range. And uh, Hagler rumbling pretty well. A right hand by Duran at the bell. And they stare at each other. Good round, big yeah, round, yeah. don't uh, go blue, go on your yeah. cool. Make your speed back. Duran knows that uh, Hagler had the extremely effective rounds in the sixth and seventh. Uh, he wasn't hurt, he may have been stunned, he wasn't hurt, he remains unmarked. Very much in this fight. Hagler has given him his best, but Hagler has not been able to be domineering. We're ready for round eight. Neither man has been cut or down. Even though Marvin Hagler hasn't boxed all through this fight, he has used his pretty good foot speed and his uh, good ring generalship to get away from Duran when there was danger. And that's something, as I said, Davey Moore and Pepino Cuevas just didn't have the tools to do against Duran. So I think now Hagler would like for Duran to lunge in with the right hand. Certainly Duran must sense he's falling behind. Hagler would like to catch him with counter shots as Duran lunges in with the right. We are approaching the halfway mark of the fight. Al, I want your impressions about how one man has been able to prevent his will over the other, or is that a curve? 
Well, I think Hagler has done so more out of technical abilities than anything else. He is simply a better boxer than Duran has faced in recent times. And Duran has not seen this kind of pressure since he fought Ray Leonard. You see the right hand blocked by Hagler. Hagler has fought a pretty good defensive fight. Duran himself has avoided being hit really flush by Hagler. Now Hagler turns to righty, and watch how effective he is when he turns to this stance. He made a pivot move and brought that left hook to the head. He just did it twice. Hagler's corner knows that Marvin is especially effective in the orthodox stance, and they welcome him switching to the righty style. And Marvin wants to fight on the inside with Duran. Unlike what people thought, he's ripping shots to the body and the head. Less than a minute to go in round eight. After a spirited sixth and seventh rounds, it's quiet here in the eighth. And if there's an edge in body work, it certainly would go to Hagler, and that is a factor as we go on in this fight. Will that take something out of Duran? Hagler blocks those punches. They're starting to uh, bang their heads here in round eight. There's always the problem of the butt. And of course, Hagler himself has occasionally been guilty, as he was in his second fight with Anna Fermo, of using his head as a weapon. The first half of this round was quiet. It's been stepped up because of uh, Hagler's ability to punch in bunches. Hard jab there by Hagler. Yet another one. A countering right hand by Duran and a little extracurricular activity that Hagler did not like. I think the last thing Roberto Duran needs now is to make Marvin Hagler more motivated than he is already. Hagler has gotten loose here in the last couple of rounds after being tight early and has done well. Let Greg take that. Come on. Okay, Marvin, listen, use the jab more often. You're not getting too much of a slug, even though you're beating him. So try not to get too much slug, God. Use that jab, double up with a jab. He'll come at you. I like it right handed, Mob. Yeah, Do real good. Stay right handed once in a while. Mm -hmm. And confuse the hell out because all your punches are coming together. Mm -hmm. When you throw that straight left hand, he gets under it. Yeah. It's got to be two and a half. Some action from the previous round as a hacker scored well with the jab. Customato, the venerable yeah, trainer, says that uh, Roberto Duran is the smartest fighter in the ring today. And I think that even Marvin Hagler has to agree that after eight rounds against Duran, he hasn't actually gone through him like a hot knife through butter. He has to give him the uh, acknowledgement that he's a pretty good boxer. Duran comes out flat-footed for round number nine. A wide stand. It looks like Duran here wants to really rumble. He wants to get the Hagler a close quarter. And Hagler again as a righty. You heard Goody Petronelli say, I like you as a righty. Change up and use that often. Hagler looks like he's ready to uh, accommodate Mr. Duran if he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here at close quarters. Duran has closed the distance between himself and Hagler. We've talked about Duran's defense, and it's excellent, but Marvin Hagler in this fight has shown that he also is a good defensive fighter, picking off punches and slipping others. Although occasionally Duran does get in with that straight right hand. The jab of Duran has been almost non-existent in this fight. Another right hand blocked by Hagler. Hagler with a three-punch combination on the head of Duran. Hagler slipping the jabs and pounding the body of Roberto Duran. Then he came upstairs with some uppercuts, and that brought an ooh and an off of the crowd. Right hook by Duran, by Hagler. This fight is very reminiscent of the fight that Hagler fought here in Las Vegas against Vito Antifermo when he tried to lift the title. He beat Antifermo as he's beating Duran right now, but around this time in the fight is when it shifted and Vito started putting pressure on. Let's see if history repeats itself. Duran has certainly not come close to going down in this fight. 
Hagler said he learned a great lesson from that controversial draw. He knew he ran out of gas down the final five rounds. He said he learned how to train for 15 rounds. He vowed it would never happen again. And so far, no indication that Hagler is uh, slowing the tempo. Good counter hook by Duran. It has no impact on Hagler. Hagler threw a lead left hand, and uh, Duran came with that countering hook. Less than a minute to go in the round. Hagler continues also to work the body very effectively. Hammering right hand by Duran on the head of Hagler. Duran with that sinister look. Both fighters looking at each other over. Duran with a right hand to the head of Hagler. Final seconds, round nine. This fight has ebbed and flowed on a number of different occasions. Right now, again, it's a chess match as they look for an opening. Good jab, double jab by Hagler, and he's gotten that punch on track since the second round. Early in the round, the Hagler with uh, an eruption, a three-punch combination, then later some body work. That was the, uh, the major noise in an otherwise unspectacular ninth round. Duran, I thought in the last round or two started to get a little fatigued. Let's see if that continues to be a problem for him. A racehorse pace. And it's been dictated by Marvin Hagler. He wants, if this fight goes uh, into the championship rounds, past the 10th, Hagler wants Duran at a breakneck speed. And there's the body work of Hagler, something that many people thought would be Duran's ticket to victory. Instead, it's been Hagler really beating that man, Duran, around the body. In the Duran's corner, they're applying the ice pack to his abdomen. And sometimes that's a telltale, a telltale sign. Uh, Duran breathing heavily, and I'll tell you this about Hagler. He's in cruise control. How are you doing now? Don't think about it. There's the bell for round 10. And again, Hagler starts in the right-handed stance. He has switched up often in this fight. I think it has confused Duran, and as a righty, I still maintain Hagler has done his best work. Look at on the inside. This is where Duran was supposed to win, but instead it's Hagler. And there was an elbow from Hagler to show you that he is not above uh, questionable tactics. The fourth uh, admonishment to Duran by the referee for a low blow. And for all the hassles over the referee, Stanley Christodoula has played a minor role in this fight. They're on the inside here in round 10. Imagine walking down that lonely, dark street, fighting on the inside against either of, the, either of these men. Both men are masters on the inside, and at this point anyway, it looks like the idea that Hagler is a true middleweight and Duran has come up too many weight divisions would appear to be the case on the inside. Hagler appears strong there. They just banged heads. Hagler pressing the attack here. Right now, Sal, he is simply bullying Duran, and the body work very effective. Alexis Arguello and Leonard apparently were right. Duran could not fight on the inside. We're halfway through the tenth. Duran has slowed down somewhat. Chopping right hand by Duran, another one, and the Hagler drills him with a right. As the Duran moved Hagler away from the ropes. Another low blow by Roberto Duran. As I count him, that's number five. Still no points being taken away, however, by Chris Dula. We're in the final 60 seconds of the 10th round. It has actually been a relatively clean fight considering what many boxing observers were expecting. I think Duran is slowing down discernibly here in round 10. And a right hand by Duran just when he was backing up. Hagler walked right into it. Less than 30 seconds to go on the 10th. Uh, right hand high in the head of Hagler. Moran with another right hand. For all of 
the attack by uh, Hagler. Duran is very much in this fight. Well, he's still upright anyway, and that gives him a chance. A hard left hand by Hagler. Duran came back in his own right. And it appears right now that Duran cannot hurt Hagler. Hagler with a big left hand at the bell, and Duran gives him a mean look. As if to say, you can't hurt me. <laughs> Good, good, good. Right, good. He's trying to turn the gun. He's trying to time that right. Those yeah. He's trying to time that when you come in and throw that straight right hand at you, see? Mm -hmm. Keep switching right hand. You, just, you feel a couple right hand. Don't just try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As we look into Roberto Duran's corner, uh, remember that piece of metal being applied to the left cheekbone of Marvin Hagler. That is to uh, keep the swelling within reason. And I guess there must be concern about uh, Hagler's left cheekbone. They began doing that in the second round. And as we look, we saw Hagler there toward the end of the round landing a couple of good combinations for Roberto Duran as this fight heads into its final stages. You wonder if the extra weight will have any impact on him in terms of fatigue. This is the uh, farthest that uh, Hagler has been pushed in his four-year reign of terror as the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. He has gone 12 rounds. He did that against Mike Colbert some years ago before he was champion. But as a champion, you're right. This is as far as it's gone, so he's headed soon into no man's land. Mustafa Hamshow lost every round, but he did go 11 before uh, he was stopped by Hagler. Hamshaw was so beaten up, he required 55 stitches on his face. Hagler now dances, wants Duran to come to him. An interesting tactic, and the fans don't like it. But why not? Durant, Hagler may feel he's ahead, and this is a 20-foot ring, and I, I believe that he wants Duran to lunge in so he can catch him with a counter shot. There was lots of talk about the gloves. They're 10-ounce gloves. They're the Reyes gloves from Mexico. They have the seam down the side. There was lots of yakety yak about perhaps that's the kind of glove that opens up cuts, but neither man has been marked. Neither man has been down. Some people may question this strategy. They might say, isn't it better for Hagler to put the pressure on Duran? Get him tired working these last few rounds, but Hagler obviously has it in his mind to box in this 11th round. Halfway through the 11th, Roberto Duran almost stationary in the center of the ring, following Hagler around. Hagler's best rounds were the 6th and 7th. Hagler's preoccupation with the judging would dictate that he might not fight this way in the later rounds, but he is doing it, risking what he feels might be bias on the part of the judges against him. Not many punches for Marvin Hagler in this round, or Duran for that matter. Less than a minute to go in a quiet 11th round. Is Hagler getting tired? Is he dancing because he doesn't quite have it in him for an all-out attack? No, we don't know, but we may get the answer in the next few rounds. Referee once again lets them battle their way out of the clinch with less than 30 seconds to go in the 11th. And here's where a rally by either fighter might steal this round. Hey, step back. Hey, step back. Okay, step back. Certainly the quietest round of the fight. After going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the middle round, Hagler decided to uh, circle outside of Duran's power in the 11th round, and that'll be a tough one to judge. It'll be interesting to look at the scorecards in the 11th round. Duran, as you look at him, he pressed the attack in that 11th round, but threw very few punches. You have to wonder, Sal, what was the strategy on Hagler's part? Is he trying to set Duran up for an assault in these last uh, three rounds? Bust this bitch up. Bust uh, this bitch up. So, uh, he's getting tired. Now. That round was uh, a little, 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 bit, so little bit too much moving that round. Let's see, three from that eye. Who's that? All right, man. 
together. Yeah, right. This guy ain't got to stay against the right. Right. Supreme confidence in uh, Marvin Hagler's corner as we focus in on the ring here at Caesars Palace. Sal Marciano with Al Bernstein. The poison ready for round 12. Hagler comes out right-handed and he comes out banging. They told him too much movement in the last round and he takes care of it by going right to their end. As champion, Hagler hasn't been this far before. He has rejected all seven of his challenges in less than 11 rounds. And the last time Duran went this far was against Benitez uh, about two years ago, and he did not look good in the final rounds against Wilfred. He was tired and catching a lot of counter punches. Right hand by Duran on Hagler's head. But you know, Al, in my mind's eye, as I go back over the previous 11 rounds, Hagler's been difficult for Duran to hit. He's been blocking a lot of punches. He has shown good defense in this fight. Better, I think, than Duran expected. Duran breathing very heavily, and I think Marvin now trying to go to the body to exploit that. Hagler took a breather in the last round, but not in round 12. Hagler is back on the inside, takes a right hand from uh, Duran, does some work with the uh, uppercut, and this is a whole different kind of style as, a, as contrasted against the previous round, the 11. Left hook by Duran to the head of Hagler. Now Duran is punching more on the inside, working the body a little bit. It may be too late, but he has certainly picked up the pace on the inside, what we expected early from him. Duran with a right uppercut. They're swelling underneath the eye, the left eye of Hagler. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe here in the 12th. Duran mocking Hagler. Dropped his hands to his side. Hagler's protecting his left eye. And Marvin looks a little bit tired. This is starting to have some of the earmarks of the first Anna Fermo fight. Marvin tiring a little bit and perhaps letting Duran back in this fight. And of course that's swelling under the left eye a factor now. Duran with the lead right and he followed up with another right hand. And Hagler's got a problem with swelling underneath his left eye. This is reminiscent at this point of the Davey Moore fight. When Moore went inside of Duran and Duran co connected with right hand. This is Duran's best round. An uppercut, points to his chin, as if to say, come on, hit me. Hagler with the left hand, Roberto with the right. And this is what it's all about. Two champions going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Take a look Last at some action round. from that uh, wonderful round, the 12th, Duran's best, as he connected with lead right hands in his corner. His people are pointing towards what you see now. They're pointing at the left eye of uh, Hagler. I think for Hagler to stop that right hand, all he needs to do is turn around to the conventional stance. Duran has not been able to land a right when Hagler is a righty. I'm shocked to see him continue with the left hand stance. We're into the 13th, and Duran's name is being chanted from here to Panama City. Hagler still has vision. It's a swelling underneath his left eye. Duran looking to unload the right hand. Hagler punishes him with a couple of hard jabs. And that doubling up with the jab is exactly what Goody Petronelli told him to do. They don't want him looking for one knockout punch. Hagler with a crunching uh, left hand to the head of Duran. 
Roberto Duran has shown us he can take the punch of a full-fledged middleweight because there are not many more full-fledged than Hagler, and he's hit him with some good shots in this fight. Whether Duran is behind in this fight, or ultimately if he's the loser, he continues to be a formidable fighter. As a lightweight, seven years the champion. As a welterweight champion, as the junior middleweight champion. And here in his first middleweight fight, he has really rumbled with the best there's been since Carlos Monzon. Right hand by Duran. Hagler was moved by that shot. You know, Roberto Duran is huffing and puffing. I really think he's fatigued, but Sal, he is fighting this fight now on intestinal fortitude. And of course, the, the long training that he put in for this fight. We're halfway through the 13th round. A left hand by Hagler, a right by Duran. Yes, this is Hagler's toughest opponent, his toughest challenge in his four-year reign as middleweight champion. And Duran has fooled the experts again. In this round, Hagler, I think, has rediscovered the right jab. It's been very effective. Duran not slipping it as well as he did in some previous rounds. In the final minute of round 13. Right hand by Duran. Hagler came with a right hook. And that was pretty much a standoff. Both punches landed cleanly, and both did some damage. And both fighters have ignored the body. They are headhunting now. Duran with two right hands. Suddenly, Hagler is on the take from that shot. Duran paws at him in the stain. Duran with a chopping right hand. Something's happened here in the last two rounds. Duran has shown that he is powerful and has been able to take the best from Marvin Hagler. And now it's showtime for Hands of Stone as he rattles Duran Hagler with a right hand. The sneer is back, and at the bell, Duran with the right hand. And in that round, while Hagler won the beginning of the round, the first half, there's no question Duran won the second half, and any fighter will tell you they'd rather have the second half of the round than fresh in the minds of the judges. And there's a lot of intrigue now about the scoring of this fight as we continue. Our translator in uh, Duran's corner tells us that his handlers are telling him that the Hagler is done, keep it up. Well, Hagler may have some swelling underneath his left eye, but I don't think he's done. <laughs> no, but I think he did show signs of fatigue in that last round. Dramatic signs of fatigue. You'll do it, man. No question about it that Roberto Duran is trying to bring that right hand, and he is sharpshooting for that left eye of uh, Marvin Hagler as swelling underneath on the cheekbone. We're into the 14th. Hagler comes out winging. And he came out right-handed and was effective. Again, I'm puzzled by the fact that he won't fight right-handed more often. Look at him go to the body of Duran. Good uppercuts by Hagler. In the first 20 seconds of this round, Hagler has been a tremendous force here. Duran backing up, looking to get some punching room. Right hand by Hagler. Duran. Looking at an uh, awesome force here in the 14th round, but he still sneers at Hagler. The fight of the year? Yes, I think so. It certainly has been everything it was billed to be. And I said the onus was on Duran at the beginning to make this fight. He has shown us. He has come back from an early deficit and fought well toward the end of this fight. But I think Hagler's having a very good round 14 here. But will Duran come out in the second half of the round as he did in 13? Hagler with a right hand that caught uh, Duran. Duran still sneering. He's joking with Hagler, and we're deep into this fight. We're in the 14th. And we're halfway through the round. And this is what Marvin Hagler did not want. A, a relatively close fight going into the final rounds. He was very, very concerned about this. 
Now Duran is giving some lateral movement to Hagler, and he's taunting him. Duran stuck his mouthpiece out at uh, Hagler, taunting him, trying to intimidate him. He may be sticking his mouthpiece out, but Hagler, I think, has done most of the scoring here in round 14. In the final minute of the next to last round. Hagler digging to the body again. Again, he works well inside. Less than 30 seconds to go in the 14th, the round in which Hagler's done a lot of punching. He's come back strongly. I see blood. I think that the Hagler's got a cut. Yes, it's around his left eye. Hagler is cut. But here in round 14, despite the sneering, it's been Hagler on the inside dominating the action as you see him doing right there. Hagler with a strong right hook to the head. Hagler knows he's cut. He's had an exceptional round, but they're gonna have to work on that eye during the one minute break before the final round. Hagler is caught in his left eyebrow. Come on, that's a big round fight, big round fight, big round fight. Okay, that's the last round coming up, just like that. Um, in every, in every goddamn round, in every round. In every round. Last round. Oh, yeah, that solo, is it? Ya lo tienes ya, no te no 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 te no te vayas para atrás, que ya lo tienes ya. Mira cómo está saliendo con todo. Tú sabes más que diez veces. Our interpreter tells us that in the uh, Duran corner, they're of course telling him to go for the eye because Hagler is cut. It's a uh, small cut on the left cheekbone. It's not a major cut on the left eyebrow, excuse me. And they continue to apply the end swell on the left cheekbone. Al, as we approach the final round, the way you have it scored, let's hear it. Well, I don't have the numbers added up, but I'll tell you what, I feel that Hagler is ahead in this fight. I think that he is leading. And I think uh, that it is up to Duran to have a big 15th round. He may, in my opinion, he may need a knockout to win, but it's up to the judges. Duran points towards his chest. He says, come to me, come to me, I want you. And I'm sure the marvelous one will accommodate him. And the strange thing about this fight is, on the outside, Duran has done relatively well. On the inside, I think it's been Hagler who has been dominant. Some people thought it was the other way around. Look at Hagler ripping shots on the inside. He's so effective, they're working the body and the head. Hagler goes right to it here in the final round. He's staying close to Duran. And I think that's the best place for him to be. Take away the power of Duran and work him on the inside. Big left hand by Hagler on the chin of Duran, but Duran is okay, so okay, he sneered again at Hagler. They call it appears he doesn't want to take any chances. He continues to punch a lot. And this fight has shown us Hagler, the hard worker in boxing, and Duran, he's the showman. So far, the hard worker in this round is getting the job done. The big news is that Duran was able to score heavily with the right hand tonight against Hagler. So much so that he caused a swelling on the left cheekbone. Many people did not think he could get those right hands home. He's gotten enough home, as you said, to cause the swelling, but is it enough to win? Here on the inside, Hagler still working very, very effectively. We just passed the halfway mark of the final round. Hagler is throwing five and six punches to every one in this round for Duran. And that cut has not reopened on the left eyebrow of Hagler. Duran now sensing that we only have a few ticks left on the clock trying to uh, get close enough, trying to get some punching room, but it's all Hagler down the stretch. Hagler with a big right hook and a left cross. Hagler takes a right hand from Duran. Hagler not taking any chances here, and he wallops Duran with the left hand. Duran with his back to the rope, takes a right hook. Hagler finishing with a drum roll here. If he feels there's a doubt about this decision, he certainly must be cementing it here in this 15th round. Ripping body and head shots to the head of Roberto Duran. 20 odd seconds to go in the fight. Left hand by Hagler, and Roberto Duran drilled Hagler with his own right. 
16 seconds to go. Two warriors, two champions, going the full 15 rounds. Hands of Stone turned out to be a formidable opponent, and he rocks Hagler with the right hand, Hagler with the left, as we head for the belt. But for Marvin Hagler, the last two rounds, 14 and 15, were a clinic to boxing fans. You look at Marvin, he seems happy, seems to think he will retain his undisputed title. Some action from the 15th round. On the inside, this was where Hagler did such effective work. Many people thought he would simply hold and wait for the referee to break. Wanting to get Duran at long range, it didn't work that way. More action from the 15th round. Hagler worked the uppercuts and the body shots so effectively in that 15th round. Just part of the good action in that 15th round as uh, Duran, I thought, dominated the round with that excellent inside work. Shows us his hand speed with some good combinations. And while Roberto Duran sneered, he simply could not do damage to Marvin Hagler. This decision, of course, a mystery. And uh, Chuck Hall trying to get ready in what is a chaotic ring. And they are still tabulating the scorecard. This will be judged on a 10-point must system. The winner of the round gets 10, the loser 9 or less. That man looks confident that he is still the undisputed middleweight champion. But remember, against Vito Antifermo several years ago, he lost a decision like this. Chuck Hall is ready in the center of the ring, I believe. Let's go up to Sal Marciano. He is in the ring now. Okay, Big Al, uh, of course the ring is crowded. Roberto Duran and uh, Hagler still trying to walk it off. Uh, of course, they have a lot of body heat. There's no question about that. Uh, the early round, the big lead by Marvin Hagler. Uh, he was especially effective in the sixth and seventh. The 12th uh, round was titanic as far as uh, Roberto Duran was concerned. Chuck Hull has the decision. Let's go to Chuck in the center of the ring. decision but it was close by point margins of two one and one you have a problem with your left eye tell me how that developed well that's probably from my old stitch i slipped and fell in the bathroom at my home what was and, this uh, that was uh before about two two fights before that's just an old cut there i felt very good i just couldn't get off with the speed the way i wanted i would have knocked this guy out but i needed to work i was in good shape so uh, i figured as long as i keep uh, 
the jab. I couldn't get it going the way I really wanted to because he's a little quicker, but uh, next time I fight the round, I'll knock him out. He's made for me, you know, but then afterwards, you don't have to knock him out. My trainer said, just beat him. You beat him, just beat him. The last question, two rounds, I came back successfully. The question does linger, though. Why didn't you knock him out? Well, you know, like I said, even though the man is three-time world champion, you got to give me a little credit there, too. Nobody's ever knocked You know, nobody's ever knocked Duran out, so you That's really don't it. go for it. But uh, next time, I had him going there, I think, in the last round. But uh, a little bit more, I know what I have to do next time. In terms of strength, how did you feel against him? Oh, I felt very strong. Uh, you know, I did, you know, real loose. Uh, you know, he wasn't getting, he just beat me to the punch a couple of times. But uh, he wouldn't come at me the way how we planned, so I had to change up. That's what a mark of a good fighter, that you can still change up in the inside. A lot of fighters can't, and uh, they're thrown off stride. You were very effective as a right, right, righty against him. Yeah, I was very effective, so that's why I went that way. Uh, he kept ducking under the, uh, the, the right jab, so uh, he ducked under to my uh, left hook, my right hand, and left uppercut half hook. So uh, that's what was effective for him, so I kept using it. He caught you a lot with the right hands. Did he ever rock you? No, I never was hurt in the fight. Uh, uh, the last round, I think the puff in the eye just started to, you know, puff up. I want to get to him before it closed or anything, but uh, you know, he, he couldn't knock me out or anything. You know, I told him he gonna have to hit me with that rape hole. Really, I, I just want to thank everybody who has helped me to to make it all the way to this day. You know, the uh, Peter Phillips, the Rip Valentes, even the Spectrum guys, uh, uh, Russell Peltz, and I like to thank my mother and my my kids and my uh, my wife for all the support. And these two guys, a happy birthday present for. Good evening, Pat Petronelli. I know there was concern in your corner about that nick on your left eye, yeah. about the swelling. You came out on the 15, yeah. and you were awesome, as if to say, I'm not going to take any chances. You must outpunch yeah. them four to five to yeah, one. I had to. I had to come out like that to make it successful. I don't like being here, you know. Uh, I don't want to leave it into the judges' hands. And uh, so even though I, I had to put everything together, I just had to keep them tied and keep pumping them. Okay, Marvin, there's lots of fans out there. Look at these point totals, and they yeah. see that you won by two points, by one point, and by one point. Yeah, Will man. you give Duran another shot? Sure. Well, well, you know, if the money's right and everything, sure. You know, uh, he draw the big attraction. Next time I put him out, though, he won't go 15. Congratulations on your eighth defense. Thank you me. are a standard of excellence at 160 pounds. Don't nobody say I can't go 15 anymore, all right? <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Congratulations to the Petronellis as well. And so, marvelous Marvin Hagler tonight could not overwhelm Roberto Duran when the full 15 did not win by that much but the point of the matter is it was his eighth successful defense and uh, he has stopped the challenge of Roberto Duran we do not want to go away without talking to hands of stone we want to get his view of it and he is somewhere on the other side of the ring he's bring they're bringing him over to us right now of course we'll have an interpreter as well I might point out that after the reading of the cards Roberto Duran I can't repeat what he said but he did mock a uh, haggler call them some names and has very little regard for him as a champion well i'm astonished at that sal uh, i think that certainly duran has to give haggler credit haggler apparently pulled this victory out with a tremendously gutsy effort in the 14th and 15th rounds he had to finish well and he did say he didn't want to take any chances he, he boasted that he could knock him out but in fact he did not here comes roberto duran who was booing uh, uh, marvin haggler because obviously he feels that uh, it wasn't that much of a problem, although he did come out on the short end of the score. I want to ask Roberto, in terms of strength, how did he feel against uh, Hagler? In terms of the force, how did you feel against Hagler? I was weak in the fifth round because I did get weak in the fifth round because I did hurt my right hand. When was this? In the fight? In the fifth round. But I didn't want to do much with him. What I did was with him with the left hand because he had... I wasn't trying to overpower him because he does have a longer reach than I do. Me confundí un poco nada más por ser zurdo, pero no mucho. I was a little confused because he's little bit that's all. Pero no me pudo hacer nada. But he can't. He didn't do anything to me. Never, never hurt him. No, never, never, nunca, nunca, nunca me puso mal. Never, never. I was never hurt in the fight. So after going 15 rounds with Hagler, what's his opinion of him? Tu opinión después de 15 rounds contra Marvin Hagler. Yo soy mejor que él. Ay, es mejor. Es mejor. Es mejor. Vale, va bueno. Considering that uh, he lost by only two points on one card, by one point on another, and by one point on the other, obviously it was close. Does he feel that he deserves a rematch? Dice que en los en los tres jueces perdiste por un punto en cada juez. Que si tú piensas que mereces la revancha. Yo no sé, la verdad que. Si le pagan otra vez, yeah. Get the money, yeah. Yeah, thank you. But you didn't feel that as a middleweight that you were overwhelmed. You were in this fight every minute. Tú, como peso medio, estuviste en esta pelea hasta el final. Hey, gracias. Thank you. Thank you. He, does he feel that maybe he lost in the last round? Que tal vez perdiste la pelea en el último round. 
no puede ser que me cansé un poco ya de los, los últimos tres asaltos, me cansé un poco por falta un poquito más de condiciones, me faltó nada más, eso fue todo. Necesito un poquito más de extra condicioning, porque me quedé tired en los últimos tres rounds. Se me tapó, las narices se me tapó. Mi nose got stuffed and I... I, I got tired a little bit in the last three rounds. I know we're only moments after the fight, but what, what does he want to do next? Does he want to continue on as a junior middleweight or still go after uh, uh, Hagler? Sus los planes de seguir como peso medio liviano o otra vez mediano. Yo voy a descansar un rato y voy a hablar con mi apoderado después. I'm going to rest, I'm going to ask, I'm going to talk to my manager, Luis Espada. A valiant challenge by Roberto Duran. And in a way, congratulations too. And so we have a close decision uh, for Marvin Hagler. He had to sweat that one through. As a matter of fact, Al, as you pointed out, he had to be awesome in the last round to win. I was a little surprised, and I think that's what Hagler was concerned about. He felt he might not get the benefit of the doubt against...